Hello viewers, welcome to my channel, IIT JLMP Arts and AP Physics with Ambarish. And today after a gap of two months back, I'm back with the CAM. Uh, and uh, today I'm going to present a very interesting problem. Uh, this uh, Many students are very confused about this problem and uh, uh, they find a lot of difficulty in finding uh, how come there are two uh, possibilities. So without much ado, let me present to you this problem. This Pathfinder Check Your Understanding Problem 32 and uh, Jan Kalda Mechanics uh, Problem Number 6. So let's uh, have a look at the problem and then we'll see the analysis. Okay. So here's the problem. A small block is placed inside a hollow cylinder of radius small r, axis of which is inclined in angle theta with the horizontal as shown in the figure. So this is a cylinder, it has got a radius some smaller and uh, it can spin about its inclined axis somewhat like you might have seen uh, there are concrete mixtures, uh, uh, con concrete mixers so they are also called mullers so, uh, for mixing cement with concrete so that is why I wrote pebble in the cement mixer uh, muller. So uh, we have placed a pebble over here and this can rotate about the axis uh, either clockwise or anti-clockwise. Okay? So, uh, hollow cylinder, axis of which is inclined at angle theta with the horizontal as shown in the figure. The coefficient of friction between the block and the inner surface of the cylinder is mu. So, here the coefficient of friction is mu. Find the angular velocity of the cylinder about its axis so that the block does not slide. Acceleration to gravity is g. Okay? So, if you want you can give it a try. I will get into my analysis right away. So, let us see. Okay. So what we can do is we can uh, uh, see the role of gravity uh, by components. So one component of gravity is acting parallel to the axis of the cylinder, the other one is acting perpendicular to the axis of the cylinder. So first of all we resolve the gravity into two parts and uh, you know that since the block is not sliding along the axis, so one component of friction will be along the axis which will be preventing the sliding of the block along the axis. So let us say I call this as a fr uh, component of friction as F1. Okay. And the other component of gravity is mg uh, cos theta acting uh, in this direction. Uh, in this direction, so we'll see this uh, FBD in another detailed free world diagram. Okay, so we can resolve the gravity into components parallel and perpendicular to cylinder axis, and consider the force balance along the axis and perpendicular to the axis. Let F1 be the component of friction along the axis, then F1 must be equal to mg sin theta by force balance. Now considering free body diagram in the plane perpendicular to the axis. Okay. So uh, let us say uh, the let us say when the pebble has reached an angle phi with respect to uh, the vertical uh, in fact it is not really vertical uh, this phi angle is supposed to be from this direction you can draw a line here and suppose this angle is phi so vertical in the inclined plane so I hope you understood what I meant by that uh, so at phi angle in this plane that is the plane perpendicular to the axis cylinder and this angle is phi. So if I forget this, I, uh, the gravity mg sin theta component, then this is as good as vertical. Then, okay. So this is the FBD that I'm talking about, and uh, uh, what's the gravity acting in this direction? So you know that mg cos theta is acting like this in this plane, and this mg cos theta will have component in this direction. It will be mg cos theta sin alpha, and in this direction it will be mg cos theta cos alpha. Apart from that, if you consider the rotating frame, there will also be centrifugal force that is m omega square r and there will be a normal reaction inwards uh, from the uh, cement mixer and of course uh, there should be in the rotating frame since the pebble is uh, stationary so there should also be some component of friction uh, in the tangential direction and all these forces will be balancing each other right so uh, if you balance the forces in the tangential direction you can say that the second component of friction here f2 f2 must be equal to mg cos theta sin alpha that's what i've written here and uh, the radial force balance what does it give you you see m omega square r should be balanced by the normal component normal reaction and plus mg cos theta cos alpha so this is the equation number three okay so now we also know that the total friction is the resultant of uh, f1 and uh, f2 okay because uh, uh, these are acting perpendicular f the, the two components are acting uh, are perpendicular to each other f1 and f2 so resultant magnitude is under root of f1 square plus f2 square okay and for the block not to slip this uh, total friction should not exceed mu n okay so that's what okay so uh, so what was your f1 f1 was mg sin theta from here you see equation 1 f1 was mg sin theta and f2 you can see uh, here mg cos theta sin alpha 
So mg sin theta squared plus mg cos theta sin alpha squared, this should be less than equal to, uh, from here you can see n will be m omega square r minus mg cos theta cos alpha. So m omega square r minus mg cos theta cos alpha into mu. So I hope the equation 5 is clear. Now uh, if I uh, rearrange this equation 5, uh, we get omega should be greater than equal to, so, so you see we have omega over here only and everything else I can take to the other side and, and uh, I can get the inequality in omega that is omega should be greater than equal to g upon root uh, under root of g by mu r into mu cos theta cos alpha plus under root of cos square theta sin square alpha plus sin square theta fairly complicated expression don't worry we will see how to deal with it okay. Now uh, since we want that pebble should not lose contact anywhere so that's that means what this equation this inequality should be valid for all values of alpha. So if omega is greater than this at every place that means what omega is greater than the greatest value of this uh, right hand side right. So we need to find the greatest possible value of the right hand side to get the correct bounds on omega okay. So that's what I have done. So now this must hold for all values of alpha so omega should be greater than max value of RHS of equation 6 that is this. For maximizing this we can just maximize the term in the rectangular bracket. So you see uh, this is just constant so I can just maximize the term in the rectangular bracket and that will automatically maximize the RHS okay. And now how to maximize this, uh, this looks fairly complicated and the derivative with respect to alpha will be complicated. So what I can do, I can put cos alpha as x and then sin square alpha becomes 1 minus x square. So instead of differentiating with respect to alpha then I can differentiate whole thing with respect to x and knowing very well that since I have put x uh, as cos alpha so x mod cannot be more than 1 okay. So that's what I have written here for this we can put cos alpha equal to x and sin square alpha is equal to 1 minus x square. However we must keep in mind that our domain gets restricted to x mod less than 1. Why because it's a trigonometric substitution we have used. We have used cos alpha is equal to x. So obviously x if I am getting a solution x more than 1 that is not physically relevant to the situation that cannot be uh, uh, representative of the current physical situation okay. So using this substitution in the RHS in the rectangular bracket we need to maximize what so you see instead of cos alpha I put x sin square alpha I put 1 minus x square that simplifies things greatly you see mu cos theta into x and then 1 minus x square means cos square theta plus sin square theta will become 1 and this expression will get further simplified. And then I can just take its derivative and put to 0. So that's what I have done. So if I put the derivative of uh, this uh, equ equation 8, RHS of equation 8 equal to 0 and solve. I have uh, skipped some bulwark, uh, uh, the calculations I have not shown here but it's not very complicated. Simple derivative you need to do, the, you need to do. And then if you just take the derivative of this with respect to x and put to 0, you will get x is equal to mu sec theta upon under root of 1 plus mu square. And our constraint is that x mods should be less than 1. So we also need to work out that when is this uh, inequality valid. Because if this comes out to be greater than 1 then uh, our optimal condition cannot be with x greater than 1. In that case we will be having the borderline uh, maxima uh, that is uh, x equal to 1. If x is coming more than 1 then we will put x equal to 1. We can see, uh, see it easily mathematically that it should be then a borderline maxima and not the uh, calculus uh, maxima. Okay. So then when is this condition valid? So you can put x mod less than 1. That means what mu sec theta upon under root of 1 plus mu square is less than 1 or mu square sec square theta is less than 1 plus mu square or uh, finally this gives us that mu should be less than cot theta. So if, we, if mu is less than cot theta then x should be equal to this but if mu is greater than cot theta then this will be taken as 1 because then this uh, quantity will exceed 1 but x cannot exceed 1 therefore we will put the boundary value that is 1 itself. Okay. So that's what, so uh, so if mu is less than cot theta, we can use the equation 9, that is this one, the e condition A, then we will get the end point, if mu is greater than cot theta, then we will get the end point maximum for x equal to 1 or that means cos alpha equal to 1 and sin alpha equal to 0. And when mu is less than cot theta, then what I can do, if mu is less than cot theta, I can just use this uh, and I can substitute the value of x in this equation this expression and then calculate omega. So here if you, if you put uh, x for cos alpha whatever value we calculated using uh, calculus maximization and uh, here you put the value of uh, uh, sin square alpha correspondingly 
then if you calculate the inequality by substituting the value of cos alpha and sin alpha you get omega is so when mu is less than cot theta using the condition a condition a is uh, this one this condition a we get omega is greater than or equal to under root of g into root of 1 plus mu square upon mu r uh, remember the there's a mistake in the answer key in the pathfinder instead of uh, cot theta they have written tan theta so you can make a correction in pathfinder you can just put it mu uh, less than cot theta and not tan theta the answer key in the jan kalda problem is perfect so uh, okay so omega is greater than or equal to this when mu is less than cot theta and when mu is greater than cot theta for uh, x i'll just put 1 that is condition b x is 1 cos alpha is 1 sin alpha is 0 so again in this equation itself you put cos alpha equal to 1 and you put sin alpha equal to 0 so you are just left with inside a very simple expression mu cos theta and plus this goes to 0 and under root sin square theta is sin theta so mu cos theta plus sin theta that's it okay uh, so so if mu is greater than cot theta using condition b in 6 we get omega is greater than or equal to under root of g mu cos theta plus sin theta so that's our uh, final answer and uh, uh, i hope you enjoyed the analysis uh, the, both these uh, conditionalities given in the pathfinder are incorrect although these uh, this part is uh, correct okay so if you enjoyed my analysis uh, please do give a th thumbs up to my video and uh, please share this video as much as possible with your friends through whatsapp telegram discord or uh, whatever medium you use for networking with them and most importantly if you have not already subscribed to my channel please do so uh, right now because that's what keeps me motivated to do new videos uh, for all of you and thanks a lot for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one and as always god bless you all thank you